Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the BRICS Do More Simple Modbus Serial Communications. Now the newest version of the Do More Designer Programming Software 2.9 includes a Modbus I.O. Scanner. This will simplify Modbus RTU serial communications to any device. Communications are done independent of the PLC scan time with little or no ladder logic for the program. Now we will be communicating to a solo process temperature controller via Modbus RTU, which is RS-485, twisted pair. Setting up the Modbus IO scanner and reading the present value, PV, or set va and set value, SV, of the solo. We will also write the set value located within the BRICS Do More controller. This will all be done without the use of any ladder logic code. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the first thing we will do is take a look at the wiring. And as we said, this is a solo uh, process temperature controller and it has um, Modbus RTU communications built into the controller itself. And we're communicating with a Brix VRX Do More Series controller. So this is my RS-485 port on my Do More. And we take the positive and it goes to the positive and the negative goes to the negative. Now we can actually look at the um, physical hardware itself of this uh, uh, Brix Do More. And this is my uh, do more PLC right here and you can see here's my uh, RS-485 port and we have two indicating lights indicating that they are, they are not communicating currently right now and there's my twisted pair and it's going back up to my solo uh, pro or solo temperature controller here the model number is a 4896 and it's going right back to the back of the unit so that is the um, actual hardware that we have and how we actually wire this uh, unit up. Next, what we have to do is look at the uh, communication settings for the solo process temperature controller. And we have to look at the menus that we have here. So the first thing we will do is go through the menu and set it up so that we can actually communicate to this um, BRICS controller and just verify those settings. So we hit and hold the set button, as we saw in that, that diagram, and we can scroll through until we come up with the first parameter here, which is here. And you notice this must be on to allow changes and everything through the RS-45 port, which it is. Next, what we have is it's set for RTU, which is correct. We have the unit number is one. So this is unit number one. We can have up to 32 without a repeater um, on the network itself. So that is correct. Next parameters are our are, are parameters for our actual uh, unit, which is the baud rate, 9600. Length is even, or length is eight uh, data bits, even parity, and one stop bit. So that is the settings on our solo in order to communicate. Now, anything that we put in the bricks uh, PLC must match exactly as we saw there. And they're the data registers of our Modbus that we're gonna be looking at in just a minute. So that is the uh, communication settings for the solo. Now what we'll do is we'll configure the uh, Bricks PLC serial RS-485 port. So in order to do that, we have to call up, go back to our Do More Designer. This must be version 2.9 or above. And we call up our system configuration. Now there are three ways of doing the system configuration. We can call up here under our project browser. We can call it over here under config. Or we can go PLC and then system configuration. Either way, we'll get you all to the same place. 
And the first thing you will see here is under the serial port, we select the Modbus RTU client, which is the master, which will communicate to our Modbus RTU uh, slave. And this is, or, or the uh, server. So our solo process temperature controller acts as the server or slave. The bricks acts as a master. So we make sure that that is selected. And under our port type, we want to ensure that it's selected for RS-45. We will also enable our 120 ohm termination resistance for our uh, 45 uh, port here. Next, what we'll do is hit the change. This is our um, serial Modbus client settings. And when they come up, you will see we have our timeout or retries, our um, uh, inner packet delay. But what we're interested in, we'll leave those as the default. What we're really interested in is port settings. These port settings must match exactly the same as what we just saw on our solo controller. So the baud rate was set for 9600. Our data bits is eight, stop bits one, and parity even, which is the exact same as what we had on our solo. So that means that we can establish communications. So we'll hit OK. So that has been all set. Next, what you'll see under our system configuration, that was under CPU, we'll go to our Modbus IO scanner. Now the IO Modbus IO scanner will now set up that a port in order to communicate to that solo. And the first thing we'll do is enable that port to happen. When we do, um, you'll see that this now becomes active. We can add a blank device and now we're editing a device here for our uh, IO scanner. And we'll give it a device name, which would be Solo. And the Modbus client will not be our TCP client. It'll be our serial that we just spoke of there. This is our unit number. And the unit number will be the same as what our, our controller, our Solo controller was, which was number one. So that indicates exactly which controller we're actually talking to. Now our read interval would be 100 milliseconds and our write interval will be 100 milliseconds. So we're going to read and write at the same time. So every 100 milliseconds or 10 times a second, we're reading or writing information to that solo. Next, what we'll do is we'll add a com. And the first thing we'll do is we will uh, read our present value and set value. Now going back to the specifications that's in the operation manual, which you'll see links um, on our website for, you'll see the present value and set value both come from address 4097 and 4098. That means if we go back here, we're gonna go into read holding registers and our first offset 4097 and we're going to be the count of two that'll give us 4097 and 4098 so that is our com under our com we want to add a field and what the field will do is actually specify what we're actually reading itself so the field name here is going to be pv for present value and we're going to leave it zero we can swap the words or um, swap the bytes or the words. We don't want to do that. Our raw data count would be one. So we're only reading the first one. And remember the first one here is this location here, which is our present value or PV value. Then what we're going to do is hey, a local address. So we're going to put that into V0. And so what you'll see is we copy uh, 44097. Now the extra four, because of our offset, comes from the actual reading of our holding registers. Next, we're gonna add another field. This one's gonna be our set value, SV. The offset word will be one because we want the 
second one to come in. We want one word, and then it turns back to green over here, as you see, because now we have a valid address. And we'll put this into V1. So once we have those two in there, which looks good, then we're going to add another COM field and we're going to actually write a single register and our offset will be 4098, which is going to be our um, set value for our solo controller. And we'll just hit, um, once we have that right, then what we're going to do, add a field. So we're going to, the field name is going to be right set value. The Modbus buffer will be zero offset because we only have the one register. And this value is going to come from V11. So every 100 milliseconds, we're going to read our present value and set value from these registers. And every 100 milliseconds, we're going to write to that register from V11. So that all looked correct. So what we'll do is we'll just hit generate profile. And we can give this a profile name and number. Um, if we hit cancel and just hit OK, what will happen is it'll say we have changes. Do you want to generate it? And we'll say yes. So we can give it a name. Um, we'll say it's a, a solo temperature. And we can give a description if we want. And the major and minor revision, we'll just hit OK. And then we can save this on our profile. We'll call it solo process temperature controller. We'll write any existing one. Yes. And now it comes back and shows us inner system configuration that we've set up this uh, uh, Modbus solo device. And it's using our serial communication. If we want, we can go back and edit it. And there it is right there. Let's cancel that. And you see we're back into our system configuration. We'll hit OK now. And it's basically telling us that we must uh, transfer this into the uh, controller before it actually will start working. So let's hit yes. And now what we'll do is we will actually transfer this or write this into our controller. Okay. We'll switch into program mode, put it in. There we go. So you can see all we have in our program currently is just an end statement. You can see here that under the structure, you will now see our Modbus IO device and we have reads complete. Now there is also, um, as we're monitoring it, you can see that we are literally uh, now communicating every 100 milliseconds to our solo here. So we are reading our value, our present value, and setting our set value. So let's take a look, first of all, that communication. If we look at a debug and we look under the uh, Modbus scanner monitor, we can actually see the device here and the transfer count and the number of times you're reading and writing. So if we had errors, it would come up here and show us the error that we have here. We can clear all those errors and try again and determine what exactly is incorrect when if we have any problems with uh, communication. We'll close that down. So this is all done again without any PLC programming. Next, what we'll do is we will actually try the program out for writing. So let's go debug again and we'll go to data view and we'll do a new data view. And we'll just bring this on top here and let's uh, uh, put in our values. We have V0, we have V1 
and we have the 11. So V0 is our present value, which represents 20.6, which is exactly what it is. And you can see if I hold on to the um, probe, it will actually go climb up and we actually see the new value being displayed in both locations. Now here is where we can actually change the value. So let's put in uh, 100 representing 10.0 and we will write that into the controller. Uh, we will confirm, we won't ask to uh, this, this to come up again. There we go. And so as we write that in, it automatically puts it in and it's really quite responsive. You can put in one, two, three. And you can see it's quite quick to put it actually into that controller itself. So the Modbus um, IO scanner is a great addition to this, the Do More Designer control. And you can easily put get information in and out. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video, video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.